And welcome to HR Bites, a podcast and video series to bring you stories of HR professionals who bring a think globally and act locally, digital HR agenda to their work, everyday people who are driving digital transformations in their organizations, data-driven and future-fit digital HR leaders. This is your host, Jay Polaki, and today's guest is my good friend, Rohini Shankar. Rohini is the Chief Human Resources Officer for Cyox Health. And she's been in HR for over 20 years and has led global HR teams here in the U.S. as well as in India. So welcome to HR Bytes, Rohini. I am so happy to have you on the show today and so glad you could join us. Thank you, Jay, for having me. I'm really excited uh, to be as part of your podcast. So thank you. Absolutely. So, you know, Rohini, for the past 10 months, we've kind of upended, um, you know, our lives, our work lives in the human resources function and just, you know, trying to help our employees with everything, not just work related, but even life related. And I think a lot of us have leveraged technology to do that. How do you think the pandemic has fast-tracked uh, tech adoption in our HR function? Or has it not fast-tracked any tech adoption in your function? You know, you are in the healthcare industry, so I'm going to ask you, has it worked or not for you? So it's worked a lot. It has really changed our world. So in our business, we were 70% of our employees were working from the office. And we had to quickly pivot and move our employees to work from home remotely. So today we have 23% of our employees that are in different uh, locations, but everyone is working remotely. And I think the big challenge we had to focus on is the pandemic made everybody really scared. So we had to keep the human and human resources by leveraging technology to change the way we did everything. So things didn't stop for us. So we had to look at how do we recruit? How can we use now more text messaging and you know video interviewing, which we didn't have our leaders trained on that. So change that to how do we onboard? So we had to make our training go remote. So every facet of the HR function, we had to pivot and change. And our big focus was to make it human so that people can still make the connections and bring the joy that is coming to going into office to make sure that we have that while we are uh, pivoting to being virtual and working from home. That's a great point you bring up. You know, we often forget that when we are introducing technology, it's the human that needs to make that technology work. And if not, it will not. Um, you know, you've mentioned how you've had to pivot and bring in technology into your workplace and have people adapt and adopt to it. How has your social capital uh, within your organization helped you in helping your employee populations adopt new technology? Or has it not helped at all? No, I think my, so when I joined Cyox, I was four or five months in when the pandemic hit. So I think my social capital helped in terms of helping leaders know that you people can be effective working remotely. So help in that change management process, as well as um, helping people, like, you know, a little best practice, like I started to put video on all my meetings. So then everybody else started to do that to make that connection in that community uh, while we were all working remotely. Absolutely. And, you know, if an HR technology professional is trying to adopt a new technology in the current workplace, what one piece of advice you have for a colleague? So I would say a first is just make sure that you look at how the process works, so how people do it, and then what are you automating or what are you leveraging technology and make sure you don't lose what makes it critical, like what is the critical factor? Um, so like, you know, when we looked at our new hire orientation program, we were like, you know, the introductions are really important. Like people need to be able to introduce themselves. Let's not make it uh, all just about the facts and the data. So, you know, just make sure you do that and just have fun with it. I mean, that's all, you know, that's the only way you learn, you fail and then you try something else and pivot and change a little bit. 
Absolutely. And, and you do a lot of that data related work. Could you tell us a little bit about what you do at Cyox Health when it comes to HR data and other data as well? So you, do, you deal with a lot of data. Um, so, you know, our business is in the business of medical records. So in uh, 5,000 U.S. hospitals, if you went to get your medical record, most uh, the, um, the hospital usually outsources it to Ciox, and we build a pipe that connects the data so that you as a patient can get it, your insurance provider can get it, the attorneys can get it. So that's sort of the business that we are in. And, you know, in HR, we deal with all data related to all of our employees, like everybody in every HR function. So we handle a lot of data and, you know, make sure that that we keep it confidential, respect the privacy, respect all the laws while driving decisions and outcomes. So what do you think we in HR can do to prepare our function for an increase in this remote working environment and hybrid work is here to stay? But I think for the rest of this year, we probably are almost all going to work from home for the most part of the year, given the rate at which we're getting the vaccinations. But what do you think we in HR can do to prepare our function for this increase in remote work? I think the biggest thing is training our leaders. Like, how do you lead a remote team? How do you lead a hybrid team? And your know, flexibility is going to be key for us to be able to recruit, attract, retain talent. And how do we let our leaders become comfortable with not controlling everything and focusing on the outcome. And that's going to be the holy grail on who can figure that out. Because many a times leaders will say, I want my team in front of me. I want to touch them and I want to feel them. And it's just like step back and like what's really important. Um, and so I think that's um, people be letting people be uncomfortable with that and putting some a framework on how people can continue to deliver while we remote and virtual. And so you can still have innovation, you can have collaboration and all of those things by leveraging technology and leveraging it effectively. Absolutely. Technology is the great connector, if you ask me. And I can tell you as the CEO of my brand new company, which is very, very new, it's only two and a half years old. Um, I can relate and resonate to all that you just said about your managers wanting <laughs> employees in the workplace physically present, right? Uh, there's so many ifs and buts that you think of, especially when you are not in the HR role, but outside of it. And it's, it's so different when you look at it from a business perspective about um, how you want your employees to be working and where you want them to be located, right? <laughs> No, absolutely. I, I know that you must have like really good stories around how you've managed to build up your business in the last two years, and especially the last one year with the global pandemic. Uh, I can totally believe there's lots of interesting stories there. <laughs> absolutely. I think I can write one of our Forbes HR articles, <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> one of these days. <laughs> of, of course. Um, so this brings us to the question connection, the fun section of our chat today. Uh, are you ready? Okay. Um, so who is one connection that you gained in the past year in HR tech that you think everyone should know? So, you know, I uh, met through a common acquaintance, uh, Camille uh, Chang Gilmore. She is the diversity officer for Boston Scientific. And I met her and she's so inspiring and engaging. I had her come talk to our employees about diversity and inclusion, and she is awesome. So huge shout out to her. And, you know, whoever connects with her, she is really passionate about the work and bringing change in the world. So she was super inspiring and exciting to talk to and uh, she really helped us uh, think about our diversity and inclusion journey. Absolutely. And I link her LinkedIn profile in the show notes for our audience. So thank you for that. What's your favorite HR podcast? So, you know, I'm like really a book person, but I um, I like the NPR podcast. I like the Brene Brown. I like the series she started to do. Uh, so those are the ones that I listen to. I, I have to be honest that I haven't been listening to as many podcasts as I should. Um, but those two that uh, come to mind, there was an NPR one on empathy that was great. I thought those who haven't uh, heard it should definitely check it out. Also, we'll link those links uh, for our audience in the show notes. 
So given, um, you know, the whole upheaval of everything work-related in 2020, what's one workplace trend other than the Zoom shirt <laughs> that you think is here to stay? A flexibility, just being flexible. I think uh, flexibility and resilience. I think people know that new employees will need more flexibility. And, you know, I think what we have demonstrated is resili resilience is something that each workforce needs and we want to make sure our employees have it. Uh, so I think those are two things that uh, will continue to stay. And then, of course, social uh, responsibility. I think employees are looking at their companies and employers to have a social conscience and social responsibility. So I think it's part of the pandemic, but it's everything that's happened in the last year and a half uh, that I would say that uh, would matter. Absolutely. And so, you know, in the past year, like you said, you reached out to, to your network and you've connected with a lot of really cool people, one of whom you just recommended. How do you enjoy giving back to the HR community? So I love to help out like on shows like yours. If my network, anybody calls me to talk about a topic, I always try to help that. Um, then I reach out to any, um, you know, just, um, you know, my uh, side, I do coaching. So I like to help any of my HR colleagues and friends that are looking for their next opportunity, um, as well as anybody who reaches out to me, honestly, in any way that I can, I try to help back and uh, help the function help people uh, because, you know, everybody has been having such a hard time right now that it's whatever we can do to help. Uh, you know, I try to do that. Absolutely. And do you uh, engage with any of our HR professional associations? Or I know we are both on the Forbes HR Council, which is awesome. But do you engage with any other HR um, organizations outside of the Forbes HR Council? No, right now it's just the Forbes HR Council with, uh, you know, I'm, uh, you know, at this moment, my work has been so busy and overwhelming. I think I can only keep peace with the Forbes HR Council and uh, my day job. Hopefully when the world becomes a little bit more normal, then I'll be more socially net, um, active, but, uh, you know, and especially on LinkedIn, I'm, I'm active, but outside of that, not. And, you know, when you are not HR Wonder Woman, what will we find you doing? Um, you know, I would like to get back to working out and doing, being physically active. And I'm dying to go to a restaurant and have a glass of wine with my friends. Uh, it has been so long since I've just done the normal thing. So I'm really looking forward to one day sitting and having maybe a glass of wine with you over dinner. And so that's what I'm looking forward to doing. Well, cheers to that. And I hope we meet soon because I'm looking forward to come to Georgia. Uh, are you in the Atlanta area? Yes, in Atlanta. Okay, wonderful. So I look forward to meeting you and having a glass of wine with you. So thank you so much for being on today's show, Rohini. I really enjoyed learning from you and thank you for sharing those nuggets of wisdom from your experience this past year. I'm sure they will resonate with a lot of our HR colleagues who are listening in today. And thank you listeners for tuning in today. I look forward to bringing you more global stories 